Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer. Welcome back to the channel and your first steps into the contact sampler. In chapter three so far, we've been checking out scripting a basic user interface for your instrument. We've set the performance view, we've added a custom background, and we've added in some sliders and knobs ready to start controlling some of the parameters we want at our fingertips when playing this instrument. We're gonna check out the final one of these controls, the UI underscore button, and how we can use that to bypass instrument effects. This is a very useful control, so let's dive on in and check it out. Okay, so let's again remind ourselves where we're up to so far. This is the Faux Alone instrument. We've added in one slider and you may have probably gone through and added in more sliders based on whatever your instrument is. And I could definitely go in and add some more sliders there if I wanted to, but this the one for now. And we've added in our first knob, which is a, a cutoff controller for a filter. Inside our spanner, we've got our scripting going on. We have our on init block, which is creating the performance view and our declaring our two controls. And then we have two on UI control callbacks, which are setting the functions for the knobs and sliders. We're now going to be adding to this script in order to flesh it out some further with a button. Now at the moment, I've got some delightful reverb that's sitting on this, one of the send effects inside contact. It's a standard reverb that I'm using to add a bit of a lush sound to these samples and help sort of extend the sound a bit beyond what I recorded. This is definitely a very common thing that we add into sample instruments all the time, reverb, because it's such a beautiful way of creating some atmosphere to some samples. But we obviously want to be able to turn that one up and down, yes, but also turn it off entirely maybe. Sometimes we just don't need it. So let's check out how we would do that with a UI underscore button. A button is a little bit different to a slider or a knob. Where the slider and knob have a minimum and maximum value, a button is basically either on or off. Nothing too complex about it. Off is zero, one is on, and that's about it. So when we declare a button, we don't have to do as much as we did before, but it is gonna change the way that our functions work. And we're gonna be introduced to a new type of function, an if function. So let's check out declaring one to begin with. So diving into the script editor, I'm again going to enter down a couple of times, tab over to set a new space, just a nice visual thing that I'm doing there to make sure I can easily find my code later on. And I'm going to declare a UI underscore button, and I'm going to give that a name of verb. So just for standing for reverb there. Now I already know where I want to place this, so I'm just going to put in my move underscore control underscore PX. And I have already worked out that my verb control is going to move 770 pixels across and 180 pixels down. And I want to make that persistent. So every time I reset or hit apply on this functional script, it's not going to reset everything. There we go. Let's hit apply. As we head back over to our instrument interface, we've now got this button. As I click it, it goes on. As I click it, it goes off. Very simple, straightforward on or off. It has taken again, similar to how the knob worked in the last video, it's just taken whatever I've named the declared variable as and put it that as the name of the button. But we can update this with a similar sort of set text command. So let's dive back into our spanner. We're going to check out down here and I'm going to go set underscore text. Open my brackets. What do I want to set the text to? I want to set it to the verb, of course. And because this is a string, I need to use quotations and I need to put in reverb bypass and close that bracket there. Let's hit apply. Take a look back at that button on the interface and it should update to reverb bypass. Same on and off, it's just updated the text there. So right now, of course, the instrument sound, if I play a little bit, is gonna have some reverb. Beautiful and lush sound, but there might be a time where I wanna turn that off and have more of the dry sound. So let's now function that into the library. As we dive down here, I'm gonna go into a new on UI underscore control. And of course it's going to be for our verb parameter or our verb declared variable. And I'm gonna pop in my end on down the bottom here and with enough space for me to work inside it. So again, that callback for that variable 
with an end on to make sure that I've got a start and end to this callback. This is where things get a little bit more interesting. If you've been following along the videos so far, and you know, if you've missed them, check down in the description for the full playlist, you know that we've been using the set engine par command quite a lot. The thing is though, we want it to do something different each time the button turns on and off. So we need something that changes based on whether that button is on or off. This is where an if function comes in. We're gonna say, if the button is equal to one, do something. If the button is equal to zero, do something else. So let's check it out. So to type in my if function, it's very similar to my callbacks in a way. I open up an if and I end an if, very simple. And I'm gonna then add all of the details inside that if function. Now, similar to the on UI control where I had to specify what actually it is that I'm controlling, in the if function, I also need to specify what it is. So I need to go if verb is equal to one, as if, as in what I'm saying there is if the reverb button bypass is on. So if it's bypassed. Now we can use our set engine par command. Let's dive down here. I'm going to tab over again just to, you know, increase uh, legibility in my script. Basically indent over anytime something is enclosed within something. So it's enclosed within this if function. I'm going to type in set underscore engine underscore par, open my brackets and ready to pop in my parameters. Now as a quick reminder, the manual, the KSP manual is going to be very helpful here to let you know what parameter to find. So far in this series, we've had engine par volume and engine par cutoff, but now we're dealing with the bypass of a send effect. That's very specific. Let's dive in and take a look at the contact manual for what that one actually is called. So I love this section of the manual. It just goes through what everything is labeled in a scripting sense to contact. If you wanna find what you know a transport running thing is, then here it is, if you ever do need that. As I scroll down, I eventually get to send effects. And the very first thing up here for all send effects is saying that engine pass send effect bypass is what any bypass button in any send effect is called in the contact script. So I wanna copy that because I'm gonna to need to use that. And then I'm gonna come back here and paste that one in. So that is the parameter that I'm affecting. And then we complete the set engine par just the same way as we've been doing in the past videos. So I'm gonna come in here and go, what value do I want it to be updated with? And of course, I want that to be updated with a value. Because it's a button though, it's not a zero to 100. It's gonna be a fixed thing. This is if the button is on, set the value of the bypass either zero off or one on. So if the button's on, I want my bypass to be on as well. So I'm gonna pop in a one. That's a little bit different from the knobs and sliders where you would have put the name of the variable in there like dollar sign volume or dollar sign cut or dollar sign whatever, whatever your knob or whatever your slider might be called. Because it's either zero or one and we actually want it to do a specific thing, which is the on, that's why we're putting in the one, the set value that we know it we need it to be. So then we complete it as per usual. It is uh, not in a group, so we want to be negative one for that. It is in slot zero, so we do want slot zero in there. Of course, that's the first slot because count, the computers count from zero. And it's a send effect. So we do need it to be a zero there because that is what's required for that parameter. Double check the manual, of course, for all of those parameter guidelines. Now, we're not quite done yet because I want to define what happens if it's not on. What happens if that reverb bypass, which is not one, it's actually zero because it's off. We need to tell it to do something there as well. We can do this with a very easy else. So if it's not one, it's something else do something different. That's gonna be exactly the same thing as this. So let's copy it down here because it's gonna do the same thing, but instead of it being on, instead of that bypass switch being on, it's gonna be zero for off. Very simple. And then we're ending that if we should be all good there. Let's hit apply and see if it works. So for reference, here is the reverb on the send effects. And this bypass switch is what we're trying to trigger on and off. So let's jump back to our interface. Let's turn that bypass on. And when we come down to the send effect, hey, the bypass is working. Because we have that else, we can also turn that off and then we should get the bypass turned off again. So the reverb is back in. Wonderful, happy days. Don't forget to save your instrument after every time you make a code adjustment because you never know when things are gonna go wrong. So definitely save. Also in an earlier video, I recommended saving versions. So if you're a little bit shaky on whether you've done the right code and you wanna be able to go back save a new version every time you make a major change. That way, if you stuff something up, you can go back to a previous version and try again.
Okay, now we've crossed off all of our contact controls. We have a contact slider, a knob, and a button that we can use on our interface. And we can use these in a range of different places and a range of different ways. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at one of the most popular controls in any kind of sampler and any synthesizer, envelope controls, the attack, decay, sustain, and release. Changing one of these modifiers is a little bit difficult because it is a modulator that we're affecting, not a parameter on an effect or in a group or something like that. So it is a little bit of a special process. So why not subscribe, ding that bell so you get notified when that video drops, and I will catch you there in the next one. See you later.